when, when, when Franco invited me to, to come to this meeting, for me it was very motivating. I have to, to confess something to you all. Jim, I knew nothing about Lean a couple of months ago, and I'm not ashamed to confess this because I actually sometimes I'm also busy working and, and it is a bit difficult. So I read thoroughly your book. It was fascinating. And this led me to think about some connection with things we are doing or have been doing for 20 years in the open source movement. So I will try to give you some uh, ideas coming from this. And again, uh, maybe a third reason for apologizing, maybe I'm the only one here who comes from academia. I'm not running a company. Okay? I'm not working uh, to build a software that will make my uh, plane trip safer or, or, or simply earn me more money. I'm actually working in computer science, in formal methods or something like this, to try to build tools that me will probably help you build better software for all of us. So uh, I also lead one of the projects, a European project which is called Mancusi. It is managing the complexity of the open source infrastructure. And maybe we'll have a couple of seconds to, to talk about this. So free <coughs> software. Since I'm coming from academia, I'm used to give definition and reminders. So I will stick to the schema. Just remember, uh, uh, you have already seen here uh, free software. The reason why you all can use uh, open source software is that in English it is ambiguous. So you have free in green, like the color of a dollar bill, and that, that means usually uh, for free. So software you do not pay for, and in general it is something you do not pay for today, you don't know tomorrow. Okay? It's like going to a supermarket, there is an offer, something is for free, you take it, come, to, come tomorrow, want another, and now you, now you have to pay. Now, free in blue, uh, well, it's freedom, okay? not just for free. And in France, in French, in Italian, and in Spanish, I mean in Latin languages, in general you don't make this confusion because it is clearly gratuit, gratuit or uh, gratis on one side, and libre, libero, libre in, uh, in the other language. So when you talk about free software, you talk about software with four rights. Use software, no arbitrary limitation, no limitation to run this software only on your professional computer or only with 10 tokens or only for five main clients and then you get another item. The ability to study and modify the software, so in general you get access to the source code. The right to distribute the software you have got and eventually distribute <coughs> also the modification you have made to this software. In general, if you don't find these four rights attached, you don't have open source software or free software. Of course, in exchange, you have some obligations you know, that can be quite different. Okay. And so this is open source software, and it has an ecosystem which is interesting to study. First reminder, uh, actually, Adacore is one of the first company in the world who has built a business <coughs> around open source software when most of the people didn't even know what it was. Okay, so maybe you should ask Franco and the people of Adacore more than me. Uh, second reminder, because it is important, we are from a business world, reminder about economy. Okay? Now, this is a particularly important moment to remind about what economy is really all about. And actually, I, I took some time to dig up the definition in one some old book that you find a lot in the States from 1990s from a professor of economics. You find it in 101 on business administration in general. So you have this definition of the second page. What is economy? What is economics? The study of how a society chooses to allocate scarce resources to produce, exchange, and consume goods and services. And just after the definition, you find something, uh, a note to the students that says, <coughs> without scarcity, there is no economy. You will not sell salty water in front of the sea. You will not sell sand in the middle of the desert. Well, you can sell, uh, actually, water in the middle of the desert. The desert can be quite expensive if you want, uh, want to have it. So if you take this in mind, let's remember this a bit when revisiting a bit the software industry. That can be interesting for us. So let's start with proprietary software, something that all of us know all too, bad, all too, too much. Well, proprietary software has been existing and working and organizing an economy for 30 years around the scarcity of the only thing which is not scarce in the software world, which is a copy of an existing piece of software. 
like licenses are what you pay for a copy of a software which has already been written. Because you are not paying for writing the software, you are paying for making a copy of it and running it. Actually, this is the only thing that costs nothing, making a copy of a piece of software today. So building a whole economy around this strange idea was kind of an achievement. And if I, I'm quite amazed <laughs> on how, how this has been built for 30 years. <coughs> well, actually, <coughs> if I have to copy the, the, the idea I have to learn from you, this, this kind of economy that has been built is not lean at all. Uh, in general, it works following a kind of a push approach, which is to say, well, you identify a market, I mean, some kind of client, you develop a software solution, try to minimize the cost for you, and so you try to maximize the number of clients, <coughs> try to develop a one-size-fits-all solution in general. Then you set out to, to sell licenses to a lot of users, if you can. So if you can, you succeed, you get rich. If you cannot, you lose your investment. Okay? It's not very different <coughs> from the music market. Okay? Creating a piece of music is not so expensive or difficult. Then you can have success in the top 10, get a lot of money. You don't have success, well, you lost your investment. If you happen to sell license to a lot of users, you cannot stop there in the traditional business because once you have sell, sold the license, well, there is not much money coming. So you try to <coughs> make sure users will need new version all the time, as often as possible, okay? every six months. Every two weeks, every two seconds, if possible, you change your software and keep paying all the time. Well, this is a lot of waste. Right? So, well, this is one thing. Further reminder about software engineering. I'm sure most of the people in this room must have seen this picture, okay? Because it is an old picture. It is a picture I have seen in my courses in software engineering in the 1980s. I mean, a lot of time ago. You remember, this was describing the software crisis in the 80s. So you have this, as proposed by the project sponsor, this kind of thing, the art software artifacts you are building. Actually, then, in the project request, you don't find precisely the same thing. Okay? So somebody <laughs> misunderstood the bit. So here are three layers and two strings, and here are three strings and one layer, and so Anyway. <laughs> then, actually, then the senior <laughs> system analyst built something where he fixes something, now we have two, two, two strings, but it doesn't swing, okay? So actually, it doesn't do work. Then you have a programmer, it <laughs> doesn't work. <coughs> and then actually you have to, the, you go to the user site, and well, there is one basic fact here in the specification that something that swings, this does not. So what you do, you go to the user site, and you <laughs> kind of, <laughs> It must work, okay? So you, you, you cut the tree, I mean, you do damage to the other system to have this kind of thing swing. And after all this mess, you go back and see that what really, really the user wanted. He wanted just a simple thing. <laughs> so, this picture is from 1982, 83, maybe. Okay, it was one of the reasons people was not happy with the waterfall model in the development because there was so much distance from the moment the user knows his needs, in general they don't know it very well, but, uh, and the moment he gets the final result, then there is a huge difference between the two and the lot of time here, which is fine. What is unfortunate is that this picture from the 80s, early 80s, and this kind of disaster is happening all the time still today. I don't know, go, go and well, probably I should not mention precise uh, example, too, too much precise example, but even for the, for the public. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we are taping me, so I have a life to In any case, uh, well, try to buy some ticket on some web system, you will see. I mean, there, there, there are a lot of things which are strange.